So in this video, I'm going to be recapping uh, organic synthesis just for the AS topics. I'm going to be drawing a synthesis map on the left hand side. On the right hand side, I'll be going through some of the mechanisms and the uh, equations. So in a synthesis map, we're going to show our roots between functional groups and include uh, the reactants and the conditions when necessary. So I'm going to start on the top right hand corner with alkanes. And I'm going to go from alkanes and go to haloalkanes. And to do that, I need an alkane. So I'm going to call that X2, Cl2, Br2, all those gubbins, and UV light as well. This is probably the first mechanism you looked at on the course this year. So in that, we're going to have alkanes to haloalkanes. And the classic one is just to take a very easy alkane, CH4. I'm going to react it with chlorine in the presence of UV light, and that creates chloromethane plus HCl. Good provision exercise now is to pause the video, see if you can do the mechanism for this, and then I'm about to go through it anyway. So first up, we've got our initiation step, where in the presence of UV light, Cl forms the chlorine radicals. Then we've got the first of the propagation steps, where we create a methyl radical and HCl, one of our products. That methyl radical then reacts with Cl2 to form CH3Cl, our other product, and the catalyst reforms. We can have a number of termination steps as well that you need to be familiar with, but end the mechanism, so chlorine radicals coming back together, two methyl radicals forming C2H6, and even a methyl and a chlorine radical forming CH3Cl. So gets rid of the radical. I need to be able to memorise that mechanism. Next up, we're going to go bring in our alkenes. So lots of reactions of our alkenes, and we need to know the mechanisms for them. They can go to alkanes. If we have H2, nickel catalyst, and a bit of heat and pressure, we can go to haloalkenes. If we have our alka, a halogen uh, attached to a hydrogen, or we can get a dihaloalkane if we do it with X2. And they can go to alcohols. And to go to alcohols, we need H2O gas, so steam, and we're going to need a strong acid catalyst, like phosphoric acid. So all of these follow the same mechanism. It's an electrophilic addition. I'm going to just do one version of this. Let's do alkene to, I'm going to show alcohol, but it's the same mechanism for alkanes and haloalkanes, we just substitute what our electrophile is. So alkene, I'm just going to choose ethene. Seeing that we're going to have our, H, our water, which is gaseous, and what happens here, we've got a delta positive hydrogen, delta negative oxygen, so that pi bond breaks and grabs that hydrogen, that breaks down our OH and creates our intermediate. Don't have to look at my Kovnikov's rule on this because we've got two equally carbons, equal carbons. So that leaves us with one of the carbons with a positive sign and our OH negative hydroxide and out from the water and that's going to come back in and attack and leave us with our alcohol. This is electrophilic addition mechanism. And it's one you need to be familiar with. We can swap this water. If we're doing alkanes, we'd swap it with H2, where this induces dipole and haloalkanes with HX, where it already has a dipole because of the strong electronegative uh, halogen. 
right, so we've got that. Oh, we can then do, if we do it, alcohol to alkene. Let's go back along here to do that. I need strong acid. H2SO4 works as well. H3PO4 is a good strong acid. And I'm going to reflux this, just heat this up. So alcohol to alkene. It's known as a dehydration reaction because we start with one product of dehydration, we give off water. So in this reaction, we're just going to take our alcohol. Let's do ethanol. And in the presence of H3PO4 and reflux, so heat it up. The OH and a H from a neighbouring carbon break off. That then leaves us with an alkene, because these carbons need to bond four times and they've lost water. So that's alcohol to alkene, that's dehydration. What are we doing on here? Let's go alcohol to haloalkane now. And haloalkane back to alcohol. So to go from haloalkane to alcohol, it's easy, we just need hydroxide ions. So sodium hydroxide, they need to be aqueous, so it's a hydrolysis. And so we can say it needs to be refluxed or it's warm, or we need some heat in that. Can't spell reflux, there we go. And the other way, we're gonna have our halogen ions attached to our sodium. We want H2SO4 and we're gonna reflux that as well. So we'll look at each of those. So let's do it. alcohols to al haloalkanes first. So just uh, an equation for this. I'll break down the equation into a few steps first of all. So we're gonna take our halogen and we're gonna react it with H2SO4. And that creates our hydrogen halide plus an HSO4. That HX can then react with our alcohol. I'm just going to say C3OH to substitute to C3HX and H2O. Uh, it's all done on reflux. I should say reflux here, still can't spell reflux. And the overall equation then is NaX plus H2SO4 plus our alcohol. It's going to go to CH3X plus H2O plus, can I squeeze it in, NaHSO4, just. So no mechanism to learn there, just need to know uh, the reaction. From haloalkane to alcohol, then, is a mechanism we need. I'm going to underline these just to make the different sections clearer. In this, we're going to do nucleophilic substitution. So haloalkane to alcohol. As we see, we need NaOH under reflux. And that's the hydroxide ions, the key bit here. So if I take C3HX, where X can be any halogen, with aqueous hydroxide ions, they substitute round to give me my alcohol and X minus. Now we do need to know the mechanism for this. So do that quickly on here. We've got C3HX, delta positive carbon, delta negative uh, halogen, because halogen is more electronegative than carbon. Our OH minus then acts as a nucleophile and attacks, so curly arrow from the lone pair, and the bond between the carbon and the halogen breaks to give you your OH plus X minus. After that, our alcohols 
we can have two different types of alcohols from now. Reactions we look at primary to secondary. Obviously there's tertiary as well, but they don't undergo the reactions we want to look at. And we're going to form from our primary. We can go to aldehydes. We can also go to carboxylic acids. And we can go from aldehydes to carboxylic acids with the same reaction. For this we need acidified dichromate. And to an aldehyde we're going to distill. Same reaction to a carboxylic acid, but this time we're going to reflux. Secondary, if we do the same reaction, uh, we're going to reflux this, it doesn't matter if you do either, we're going to get a keto. So we'll look at this reaction now. So we've got alcohol to aldehyde. It's got to be a primary alcohol. <coughs> so if I take a primary alcohol, let's do ethanol. We're going to react with an oxidizing agent in the presence of acidified dichromate. And this we're going to distill. And I'll get my aldehyde, in this case ethanol, plus water. Same reaction now if I reflux. This time, still acidified dichromate and reflux. And I'll get my carboxylic acid and water. But notice now I've got two oxygens here and three on here. So I'll need to double that up there to get that to balance. The secondary to ketone, exactly the same as this first stage, except it'll be a secondary alcohol. Key bit you need to know here is the color change. So dichromate is that we're reacting this with, is our oxidizing agent, is originally orange, and then it goes green or dark green or uh, dark black, it's not the best way to describe it, dark green uh, in our final products. And that is your synthesis map and all our first year reactions.